Hey guys, so today we're going to go over how to install uh, ParrotSec, which is now the supported version and actually uh, a new partnership has developed with Hack the Box, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, I've been using ParrotSec for a while now. Uh, I use Kali, Kali also, but uh, Parrot was designed uh, not only for security personnel, uh, but also for a home use distro. Uh, and they have privacy in mind, so they've always had two accounts um, instead of where Kali initially had just root access, and that's how you logged on. ParrotSec uh, always required you to have a user account that you would log on as and was a more secure Linux distro, uh, as well as they have privacy in mind with things like a non mode, which in, uh, when you activate that will route all your traffic through Tor um, and a bunch of other things. So. There's a lot of cool features uh, over the next few months. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the things that Parrot brings to the table. Uh, however, what I'm going to do today is show you how to do a Parrot install. Now, I'm going to be doing it through VirtualBox as uh, it's easier to do the recordings and, and have everything set up. Uh, but the way I'm showing you to do it uh, is actually so you'll be able to install it on your own personal hard drive as well if you wanted a dual boot or you know, replace whatever Linux distribution or Windows or other operating system you're using. This will allow you to use uh, ParrotSec uh, instead of that. Now, mind you, like I said, they do have various distributions. So if you go to Explore Us, you can see what the Parrot project is all about. Um, what I'm going to do is we'll go over to the downloads. Now, in the downloads, they have quite a few. So you have uh, just the OVA files. If you wanted to just download the virtual machine, uh, it's a uh, file itself. Uh, they also have your home edition, as we said, uh, security, and then your Docker containers and net installs for things like tablets and uh, phones and things of that nature. I personally uh, will show you how to use this, uh, download and install the security distro. Uh, but again, if you wanna use it for home use and have no um, reason or, or no need or want to really use the security distribution, then using the, the home distribution would work for you as well. And as you can see here, um, not only do they have KDE, they also have a mate ISO. And what those are is that's just your desktop environment. So that's the way your GUI looks, feels, and some of the other features that get built into it. Uh, me personally, I've been using the KDE Plasma Edition for quite some time now. Um, so what I recommend, and again, you don't have to, it depends on your internet connection speed and things like that. Um, I always recommend downloading the torrent uh, as you can sometimes, especially on slower connections, download a little bit faster due to how it works. Um, but you can do a direct download or select your server and download from there. Now, since I already have the ISO file, I am not going to re-download it. I'm not going to go into all that. Um, this is just where you would go if you wanted to do so. Now, from there, if you go into the documentation and look, which, again, we're not going to look at all their documentation today. I'm going to kind of go by uh, with the way I've done things lately and, and kind of reference what they've done. Um, one of the things I say is the best way to install this and make a bootable USB so that you can run it as a live USB or install it as a primary hard drive operating system um, is to use Belena Etcher. And excuse me if I um, butcher that word, but um, we're going to go over here. We're going to go to Belena.io, uh, go to Etcher, and here's your downloads. Um, now, there's several variations. There's the installer and there is the portable. Me personally, um, I installed it to my system. So again, I'm not going to re-download. I'm not going to show you the installer. Um, you would install it the same way you install just about anything else um, as far as Windows programs go. So we're going to go through and download the Windows version, install that, and now we have Belana Etcher. So next, I'm going to actually show you how to make a bootable USB. All right. Now with this, like I said, I already have the ISO and I already have um, a USB drive in my computer. So normally you would plug in your USB drive. So we're gonna go to select image and we want Parrot KDE security. All right, and so that's gonna put that there. Now we select our target. Now I've already done this, but we'll show you how to do it again. Um, we'll go in and we'll say, okay, I want my eight gig USB drive to be my bootable USB for Parrot security. So we hit continue and flash. 
Now, the reason my screen just went black was because the Windows UAC came up and said, hey, are you sure you want to do this? Um, yes, we do. And what I'll show you here is because I'm going through Windows and the way it works, it's telling me that the disk is bad. Um, we just hit cancel there. And as you can see, it's flashing the drive already. Now, this takes a little bit of time. So we're going to speed up the video um, and let it finish. And then once it's done, um, we'll go into installing this into VirtualBox. Since I'm not going to be using the USB myself, um, we'll go into how to install this into VirtualBox. And from there, um, you'll be able to see um, once, if you were to boot this from USB, how it all functions and what would actually look like on your system. So we'll let that go. And then we will pull up VirtualBox. Now I already have it here. We're going to create a whole new one. So we're going to go to new. We're going to call this ParrotSec2 since I already have one. Um, and the machine folder you store it to is wherever you want. We're going to say it's going into our virtual machines. Um, this is definitely going to be Linux. And Parrot is built on Debian. It's an offshoot of Debian. So we're going to say Debian 64-bit. And we're going to go next. Now, I'm running quite a bit of RAM. You may or may not be. So we're going to give it 8 gigs. Um, and then we're going to create a virtual hard disk. Now, all these are your choice of how you want to choose them. Again, I'm doing this through virtualization. Um, I also have it installed on my main hard drive as another operating system. So um, it's completely up to you. They all have their ups and downs. Now you can have a fixed size that'll time out um, or basically it'll allocate that entire size for you um, of whatever you set it to um, immediately. Or you can have dynamically allocated, which will, um, as you fill up space, it'll go up to 100 gigs. So it doesn't immediately take up that much space on your hard drive. It'll work its way up. So we'll do dynamically allocated and I tend to like to give things a good bit of space just because I keep the hard drives available for it. And we'll do that. Now we'll go to settings, system, oops, storage. And where it says empty, what we're going to do here is we are going to attach that ISO. Go here and we're going to start. All right. So this pulled up on my other monitor. Um, it's saying that it didn't find the virtual disk, which is fine. We just go in here, we tell it that's what we want to use. And now, as you can see, um, it's here. Now, like I said, the, this is acting as if you're booting from USB, even though you're not. Um, so you have the option of going into live mode or you know, going into anything else. What we're gonna do is since the point of this video is to show you how to install it, we're gonna go into install. And just to make things a little bit easier, we're gonna show you with the GUI. Now, as with um, any installation, you go through and it wants to select your language and everything else. We're going to go through that. Um, English, United States, American English. Again, you can set it to whatever your um, language is, wherever you come from, um, whatever you prefer, or your nationality, or, or what have you. Um, it all works the same. Uh, again, this is just like installing any other operating system. Uh, if you've never done a Linux distro, or if you've never done any operating system installs, then hopefully this video helps you out um, with what you're trying to do. Uh, again, it's going to detect everything. Like I said, ParrotSec built on um, security as well as privacy um, will require two passwords. So the first one being your root password. So we're going to put one in for that. And then, of course, you have to re-enter it. All right, and we're gonna continue. Now it wants the user. So we're just gonna call this user Parrot because, well, Parrot OS, and the username for the account is gonna be Parrot. And now we choose a password for that. So let's put a password in for that one. And again, I have to put it in twice. Hopefully I did that right. And now we configure the clock. 
So again, these are just basic settings that you would set up on anything, but the biggest difference is um, the two different uh, accounts. When we initially, in one of my old blog posts, I took you through setting up Kali, the original Kali install um, only requires you to set up a root account. This way you're setting up both, and even now the new Kali requires two accounts. So um, Now, for those new to Linux, and or those new to um, you know want things to be easier there are three ways to partition your disk uh, with Linux you have you know guided using the entire disk um, you have logical volume manager or you have encrypted LVM uh, for this purpose of this video what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do guided using the entire disk so we're gonna go continue and yeah that's gonna be our disk right there continue now here it says, you know, you there's a reason this says recommended for new users where it says all files in one partition. So if you are installing this on your as a main OS for your computer, it's best to separate your partitions, home, uh, var, and temp, uh, or at least the home partition. Uh, I'm right now going to just separate the home partition. If you don't do that, then anytime your system breaks or you need to change something, then you end up having to redo the entire system. At least this way, if you separate the partition, your, your home partition from everything else, then you won't lose your files if you have to say re-image um, or, or reinstall the OS, uh, because then you can just put it all, rewrite over the um, auth in, in you know, your other, um, uh, root partitions and everything else like that and you can leave home separate um, for the purpose of this install we'll show you the better way to do things and for now at least the, the mediocre way um, which is better than the recommended for new users and we'll separate the home partition so we'll say continue and the nice thing about this is it does all of the partitioning for you so it's going to give you 67 gigs in home and it's only going to give you uh, 800 megs as your boot partition and then the rest of it is going to give uh, go to root so we're going to go through we're going to continue and write the changes to disk and again since this is the only operating system on here um, we're going to let it do you know it didn't assign swap uh, that's if you run out of memory uh, so we're not going to include swap in this we're going to leave it as is and rely on the fact that we're using 8 gigs of RAM to be enough. Uh, and we're going to write the changes to disk. And now it's going to install the operating system. So this here can take a while as well. Um, and what I want to show you while that's installing, since we were going over Belena Etcher, it's done. All right, so it took a little bit of time, but at least now it's done. And if you're using Windows, which you'll see, as it's saying that you have to format the disk because of the fact that it is now a Linux partition. Now, that's one drive, but because it broke it up into two drives, this other drive now has your boot and EFI partitions on it. But again, we're not going to mess with that anymore. Um, that was just a way to show how to go about um, creating a bootable USB to a parrot set. If you wanted to install this or use it as a live USB or whatever, um, gave you that option. What this is doing is now installing the system. While that's installing, what we can do is we can go through and I will show you, um, actually, we'll let that go because I made changes to the other operating system already. Um, so we'll speed up this video and we will let it install. All right, guys, so this is just running uh, the final installation phase as far as installing the operating system. Um, once this is complete, we're gonna move into uh, installing the grub which is uh, how Linux boots and uh, after that's all installed uh, 
we'll go in and we'll have to do a few configuration things just because this is VirtualBox. So we will have to install the VirtualBox tools and then we will run the initial update. Uh, and after that, we'll be done. So I'm going to go through and there's the installing Grub Bootloader now. Uh, I'm going to go through once this is done, uh, show you those little tweaks so that you don't have to have any issues going along. And here we go. Do we want to install the Grub Bootloader to the master boot record? Yes, we do. Um, this is our only operating system on uh, this VirtualBox instance. If you were installing this uh, as a dual boot configuration, then you would first, um, it really depends on how your system's set up. Um, what I did on mine personally is I have two separate hard drives. So I was able to install the Grub Bootloader to the MBR of my second drive. Um, but if you were trying to dual boot from one hard drive, then it gets a little trickier and you will have to figure out what you want to do from there. Um, we can go over that later. You can ask questions and there's actually a lot of answers online on how to get that to work as well. Um, but for now, we'll consider this as solo OS. We'll install the Grub Bootloader to the master boot record. And yes, we want it on dev SDA. Now we're installing the Grub Bootloader and its finalization steps. So now that it is done installing the Grub Bootloader, it's finishing the installation. So um, it configures all your users and passwords and things like that. Um, and it's going to retrieve any other backend files that it needs to to finalize this. Um, after this section is done, it's going to tell us to reboot. Uh, that way it can load into the main operating system. And once it reboots is when we'll get into the, um, uh, the VirtualBox uh, guest tools or guest editions um, installation. Uh, we'll reboot once more and then we will do the update. Now, some people do it differently. Um, I have seen some um, links and some people tell you to, and here's the uh, reboot, so we're gonna continue to let it restart. Um, some people will tell you to update and then um, install guest editions. I do it the other way um, for two reasons. Well, one reason really, um, and the main reason is uh, when you run an update or an upgrade or anything like that, all the tools that are there will get updated. So if your guest edition that is part of your operating system is out of date, uh, a version or so, then the update will fix that. Whereas if you update beforehand, um, that doesn't happen. You've updated your system, you've installed the guest editions that are already there. Um, so it doesn't get the update that you were hoping for. So this way, what we're gonna do is we are going to install um, the guest editions once it removes these live packages and reboots. Um, then we're going to restart again. We're gonna fix our display um, because when we first do this, um, with the newer distribution of VirtualBox, it, the auto scale doesn't work right away. Um, it doesn't automatically change your resolution. So we're gonna change the resolution so that you can see everything clearer and then we're going to upgrade and be done so let's let this boot thankfully it's linux now granted it is VirtualBox; it doesn't have all the hardware that um you know a real install would have but enough that it boots relatively quickly unlike windows which tends to boot kind of slow unless you're on a solid state drive so we're going to let this come up as you can see when i scale it it doesn't auto scale and again, that's a problem with not having the guest editions installed yet. Um, but while this is loading, um, keep uh, please subscribe to this channel and follow along. I will be doing more videos on how to move things over. Maybe there were tools or um, recon scripts or lists or anything like that that you used in Kali um, that you really love, but um, you know, it was, it was a base install, it was part of Kali, you never had to do anything, it was just there. Um, I'm gonna go through and show you how to migrate some of that stuff, how to move some of that stuff over. Um, I also have a GitHub with a few things that will help. Um, uh, I'm working on with uh, trying to make your VPNs and things like that a little cleaner as well. So uh, feel free to look up Shellar Cybersecurity on GitHub. 
I'm there. Again, it's not the greatest right now. I'm still working on a lot of things. Um, some of the scripting stuff is newer to me. Uh, so bear with me on that one. But, you know, as long as I can provide as a community, I'm trying to do. So I know a lot of people who are used to Kali, they download the virtual box images and they just, you know, go ham. Uh, I'm trying to give you a better way or at least a um, more thorough way of doing things. So, like I said, we're going to log in, and it logs me in as Parrot. Again, you're not logging in as root. So, don't expect to just be able to execute a command as an administrator. It's not going to work. Um, for when you log in as a user, you could think of Linux. Um, Linux was the first, uh, well, maybe not the first, but Linux utilizes what you may know as a UAC. So, if you're used to Windows and you've never used Linux before, uh, you've never used anything like that, you can consider it kind of like a, a user account control, uh, only I kind of like the way Linux works better. Um, so where you either get an error or to where it says, hey, you're not an admin, you can't do this, or you can only do it as root or what have you. Um, or you type in f uh, sudo and sudo will let you do it if you have the permissions to do so. So the first thing we're going to do now that we're here, like I said, we're going to install the guest edition. So we're going to get out of that. We want in Parrot Guest Edition CD. No, we're not going to check software yet. All right. Well, now, since this is Linux, yes, you have the GUI, and on occasion, I like to use it, but uh, we're going to do things the, the, the Linux way. All right. So we're going to show you a few things here. So now that we're in Terminal and um, I have it available, what we're going to do is if I do print working directory, we'll see that the way Linux does things is I am in home parrot, which is my home directory as the parrot user. Um, what we need to do is we need to actually copy the Linux uh, or the VBox guest edition. So we will change directory to root and I will do an ls so that you can see all the directories and files here. Now, where this is going to be located is in media. So if we do cd media. And do ls. Now we have cd-rom and cd-rom zero. So cd cd zero zero ls. So I'll have to buy about that one. Cd-rom. Where are you? Uh, apologies. There it is. All right. So that makes that a little bit easier. So what we'll do is we'll show you a few commands. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to copy this to the desktop. So we're going to do, or actually we're going to copy it to our home folder. So cp vbox Linux and tab runs autocomplete in Linux. So we're going to do that and that. And now what that's going to do is that's going to copy virtualbox Linux editions.run to our home folder. So now if I do cd here and do print working directory, as you can see, we're in home parrot again, ls, and there's vbox Linux edition. Now, like I said, this is something you have to install as an administrator. So we're going to do, if we do, if we just do it like this, it gives you the error. It must be run with admin privileges. So what we're going to do is we're going to do sudo vbox and it's going to ask for our password. I'm going to type that in and now it's going to install the guest edition. Now, what comes with guest editions for VirtualBox, and again, if you're installing this into your home operating system, you don't have to worry about it. But for the VirtualBox instance, um, what it allows you to do is copy and paste from guest to host. Uh, it will allow for drag and drop from guest to host or host to guest. Uh, you can set it up for directional, and I'll show you here if we do uh, uh, under devices, shared folders, shared clipboard, and drag and drop. That is uh, part of what guest editions give you. If you don't have guest editions installed, you are not able to utilize these capabilities. Even though you may turn them on, they won't work. Um, and the other thing it's going to give you is the ability to go full screen on your monitor and actually have it scale to screen. Now, like I said, um, there's a, a little quirk with this one where even after it's installed and we reboot, it's not going to auto scale for us. We actually have to go in there, go to full screen, and then set the um, display resolution ourselves so that it will remember where we need to be. So once this is done, um, what we're going to do is we're going to reboot. And I will show you how that works. All right.
So, as we can see, uh, it has finished, and you can see in the bottom line, or hopefully you can see, um, it says Virtual Bitbox Guest Edition. Uh, the running kernel modules will not be replaced until the system is restarted. So basically anything that um, hooks into the kernel uh, will not work. So what we're going to do, just to make sure everything's working properly, is we are going to do a shutdown bash r now. And what that does is uh, the shutdown, of course, is going to shut down the computer. The switch you're giving it, the dash r, tells it to restart. Um, if you were to issue a dash h, that would tell it to halt, so it would shut down and stay shut down. Whereas the dash R will tell it to reboot. And you can actually give it a time frame. We're saying now because we want it to restart right now. So it's going to come back up. And this time it will have the guest editions there. Now I'm not going to go over. Um, we're not going to see the drag and drop functionality or anything like that. Um, but like I said, I'm doing this A so you can know how to install those guest editions. And B because then I can actually take the screen full screen. And you'll be able to see uh, a little bit better of the display. And we'll kind of uh, go through, we'll install the upgrades or the updates for the system. And with Parrot, uh, you don't go through and do an app up dash update or anything like that. Um, you can if that's really what you want to do. Um, but the nice thing about Parrot is it has built in. Um, you just do sudo Parrot dash upgrade and it will upgrade everything for you. So that's what we're going to do um, as soon as we get loaded in. So bear with me for a second, and we will be on our way. All right, so um, we rebooted. I've logged back in. And like I said, this is showing us updates is available. But what we're going to attempt to do here is we're going to go to full screen mode. And as you can see, it attempted to go and scale. But as it didn't scale properly, what we can do is go into settings. And we want system. And now we're going to go to display and monitor. And resolution. We're going to go 1920 to apply. And uh, it doesn't like the graphics card setup. So let's fix that real quick. So we're going to do one more thing before we upgrade. That way you can see it work. Unfortunately, um, VBox, uh, VirtualBox is not perfect. Uh, there are always little quirks. Um, so I should have known better. Um, I've made changes in the past to some of these. But what I'll show you here so that you can do it in the future if you need to. So this set, the graphics controller is BMS VGA. That one, unfortunately, as we just saw, did not work right. It didn't scale. Um, so like I did on some of my other ones, we'll switch this over to VBox SVGA. Uh, as the VBox graphics controller, and we'll hit OK on that, and then we'll start it again. Now again, nothing is perfect. There's always glitches along the way. Um, I had a feeling that was going to happen. Um, I didn't say anything um, solely because I just wanted to make sure, and hey, we all run into problems when we're doing this. So you get to see kind of some of the problems that you may run into uh, in the future and some of the ways to fix it. Um, if I had not shown you that, then you would have been wondering why I changed certain settings. And now you'll see, um, once this is all back online and everything, why um, I had to change that. So once this comes back up and I log in, um, I'll be back. All right, so again, system rebooted. Um, we're going to go through here. And as I said, we know there's updates available. So let's go back to here and do settings, system. Now, if I'm right, which as I said, I've fixed this in the past before, so I could be. We're going to do 1920 by 1080. We're going to apply. And we have scale. So, like I said, it. Quirks, VM, uh, if you're using VMware, you may run into this. Uh, you may not. They have their own quirks on VMware. Uh, I'm not licensed for VMware, so I'm using VirtualBox. It's open source. It's free, so I'm able to use it. So now that we're here, we have a full screen again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, and I'm going to make this a little bigger for you. So now we can 
and see. What we're just going to do is sudo carrot upload. And it's going to go through and it's going to update and upgrade anything that it is possible to upgrade on the system. And that will get you your Parrot installed and completely up to date with any software that's already there. So um, while this is running through, and again, um, you know, I, I hope this helps. I hope this is a, a good way for you to go through and just get a little bit of learning in. Um, again, I, nobody's perfect. I wanted to show you some of the mistakes that can be made. I wanted to show you, um, you know, some of the quirks that you may run into if you're using this in a virtual machine. Uh, if you're using it in, you know, if you do a hard install, you may run into something else. Um, feel free to reach out. Uh, a lot of the things that, you know, I've run into, uh, you take time to fix. And after um, this video, some of my next videos, I will be showing how to install or move over some of the tools um, that you may have liked in Kali that aren't in Parrot. Um, I'll be showing you what a non-mode is and how it works. Um, which can get a little hazy because then you start, uh, if you're not using it strictly for your own privacy, you can do some other things. Um, but, uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm only here as a resource. I'm here to help. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at SCS underscore Pittsburgh. You can find me on Discord. Uh, if you're looking for me on there, feel free to join Security Blue Team, um, Security Red Team. And those websites are securityblue.team and securityred.team. I'll have all my handles and things like that um, in the description of the video so that you can find me, any of my colleagues, friends, people that I um, you know, communicate with uh, in chat on a regular basis. Um, we're here to help. We're always here to make sure things go easy for you and to help any way we can. So, again, um, I'm, I, I hope this was instructional. I hope you get a lot out of it. And hope that, you know, in the future you learn to love cybersecurity or at least, you know, start to value some of your privacy and um, start playing with Linux a little bit more. Because Linux can be very helpful. Um, it's very customizable. And, hey, it's free. Um, who doesn't like free? So um, have fun. Take care. Um, be safe. And um, hopefully this helps you during the current crisis and gives you something to look forward to. Keep in mind, this video is because Hack the Box merged with Parrot. Um, they are now working together and collaborating a lot more. Um, so I wanted to give people a way to continue to learn. So there's one way that you can get started. Enjoy your day.